Hi, I'm Gary White for Central Kentucky Television. I'm here to talk about Farm Bureau, and I have some representatives from our area who know quite a bit about Farm Bureau. We have Larry Elder, who is the Marion County President for the Marion County Chapter of Farm Bureau, correct? Right. Uh, Joe Paul <laughs> Mattingly, who is the 5th District State Director, which includes 11 different counties, right. including Central Marion, Washington, Nelson being mm -hmm. some of them, right? Okay. And we have Larry Hardin, who is the Washington County President for Washington County Farm Bureau. Thank you for being with me today. Thank, well, you. thank you for having us. Now let's start off talking about Farm Bureau. When people hear Farm Bureau, they probably think of insurance being an element of it. That's different than what we're going to talk about today, right? We're talking about right. Farm Bureau as an organization that helps the farmers in our community, right? Correct. Okay. So tell us, uh, Joe Paul, if you will, a little bit about what Farm, Bu Farm Bureau does. Okay, I guess, uh, you know, the best way to summarize uh, what Farm Bureau is all about is uh, in the Farm Bureau mission statement. Uh, Kentucky Farm Bureau's mission statement is, uh, it's, uh, you know, it says we're a voluntary organization of farm families and their allies, mm -hmm. uh, dedicated to serving as the voice of agriculture by identifying problems, developing solutions, and taking actions which will improve net farm income, achieve better economic opportunities, and enhance the quality of life for all. So in a nutshell, that's what, you know, that's what a Farm Bureau is all about, whether it's local or state or American Farm Bureau from that standpoint. Okay. So Farm Bureau is a national organization. It is. Okay. How long has it been around? Uh, Farm Bureau was first initiated uh, in the early uh, part of the 19th century, like 1919. Okay. Now, each of our counties locally have a, direct, have a president, obviously, but they also have, you have Farm Bureau in every county in Kentucky, right? Right. right. That's great. A part of, I'm sure, of what you do is lobbying efforts as well to help the farmers out. And as agriculture has uh, not been as prominent in our areas recently, I'm sure that's become a big effort that you have to work on. Absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Right. Uh, uh, of course, you know. Agric our Farm Bureau first came about back in the early part of the century to uh, give farmers a voice in, uh, you know, in community affairs as well as uh, political affairs uh, in s on the state level as well as nationally. Of course, you know, we were a rural society, uh, didn't have the media uh, that we have these days and the technology, so, you know, it was uh, kind of a sparse <coughs> rural group. And, uh, Farm Bureau came about to uh, uh, form a union or a network for farmers to, uh, you know, to be represented in, in political uh, arenas and, uh, you know, to take the farmer's case to, uh, you know, to, to Frankfurt and to Washington, represent them. Now, each of you do farm? Yes. Right. And to be a member of Farm Bureau, you actually have to generate, I think you were saying about 20% of your 20 income? 20% of the income has to come off the farm in order to be a, a, a member, or not a member, but a regular member. Okay. And there are different kinds of membership that we're going to talk about in a minute. Right. What kind of farming do you do, Larry? Uh, beef, cows, hay, and tobacco. Okay. And I'm a full-time dairy farmer. Actually, everything we uh, eat, drink, and uh, drive comes out of the milk tank there at home, and uh, it provides all the income. So we milk about 100 calves, and uh, we have uh, about 100 acres of soybeans. We raise corn as well and hay for the dairy operation there, and then we have some beef cattle as well. Okay. And Larry? Uh, or two yeah. Larrys. <laughs> uh, got a beef cattle farm operation. Uh, I also uh, do a little trucking on the side and kind of help out with the, what the farm can take care of. Now, that's probably an issue that has come up in the last several decades that a lot of families in our community used to, farming used to be the prominent uh, industry. Is that Absolutely. correct? Correct. About when did that kind of start falling back as being the prominent industry in the area, do you know? Well, it's been a gradual effort, you know, back, uh, say, 50 years ago, we were pretty much an agrarian society. Uh, you know, more than half the folks lived on the farm, made their living on the farm and lived there as well. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of, uh, you know, kind of uh, changed and, and of today, uh, you know, just 1% of the folks farm. 1%. 1%, yeah, and we provide the food and, and fiber for the other 99. So uh, that's a big, uh, one of the big uh, efforts of Farm Bureau is to tell the story of agriculture because even in a uh, rural community like Lebanon, you know, there's folks in our community and in our school, kids in our school, that really don't know where their food comes from, actually. They mm -hmm. think it comes from Kroger's or a Walmart or somewhere, and they don't realize, you know, that we're had gifts from the farm to the table, and there's a big effort on Farm Bureau's part to, uh, to tell that story and to, uh, you know, get the word out that, you know, if you are uh, drinking a glass of milk or eating a slice of bread, uh, it started on a farm somewhere. Now, for Marion County, 
approximately what's the membership numbers for? Income? Total membership would be about 3,500, and uh, about 1,100 of those would be uh, uh, income comes off the farm, or at least 20 percent of it does. Mm -hmm. Okay, so about 1,100 members. Yeah. And I believe their last census was about 19,000 people. So. That's about what five percent yeah. that we're talking about potentially. How about in Washington County? Uh, our membership is about twenty one hundred now. The last year twenty one, just a little over. Mm -hmm. uh, about uh, six hundred and fifty is uh, regular members out of that twenty one hundred. Okay, so I think it's probably about five percent there too. If I do, because <laughs> it's about twelve thousand or thirteen thousand in uh, in Mar in Washington County. You're saying there are different kind of memberships, and you're saying some of them actually have, you had to have 20% of your revenue to be a, what would you call that membership? To be a regular, regular, regular member. Regular member. But you also have associates, those who are interested, your allies right. that you're talking about, right? So anybody can actually become a member of Farm Bureau if they have yes. interest? Yes. Okay. What kind of, how would somebody become a member if they're interested? Well, if, if you, of course, if you buy Farm Bureau insurance, so we're not going to mention insurance much, but if you buy insurance, that... Uh, you know, $25 uh, membership fee is included in that insurance, and that's you're automatically a Farm Bureau member if you have Farm Bureau insurance. Okay. And then, you know, once you're a member, you're designated a regular or an associate member. Okay. Because of that insurance purchase. <clears throat> and if you don't have insurance, you can still become a member. You can still member. be a member. You can pay the $25 and become a member. And back before, you know, Farm Bureau got in the insurance business, which was in the 40s, I think, uh, they, uh, you know, it was just a, a service and a union for farmers. And actually, you know, I'm sure they had membership dues back then. He just joined the Farm Bureau as a member. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? I was going to say that uh, on the regular member, you can also be like an ag business as a fertilized dealer or okay. or somebody in the uh, county agents. Mm -hmm. They're considered as anything a ag oriented. Anything that's ag oriented mm -hmm. is part of. Mm -hmm. than a regular member. Well, a big thing that people are talking about now with different businesses is the ag tourism. A lot of the wineries that have sprung up, they have in that area, would they be considered a possible membership for Farm Bureau as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. They're harvesting the wine, I guess. Yeah. The grapes mm -hmm. is like farming. <laughs> you added, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. right? As a district director, you have to make 50% of your income for farming versus 20%. Okay. So to be a district uh, director, which there's, uh, there's three in our uh, 11 county district mm -hmm. we have to make over half of our income from from actual farming but that's you know when you get to the state level they want to make sure that uh, uh, from the ag standpoint that you know those folks on the board that uh, you know they're actually making a living you know yeah. from the land what would you each say in recent years has been the hardest part of maintaining a farming business that's a challenge you know it's uh, uh, it it's like, uh, of course, it's always it's a labor-intensive business, and it's, you know it's it's high tech these days. It's uh, capital-intensive. It's uh, you know it, it takes a lot of management, a, a lot of money, and of course you know you have to have the resources, you have to have the, the labor in the land, and uh, uh, some good management, and you know some luck along the way. Uh, but one thing about you know producing or in, being in the agriculture business and the farming business, you know that's a commodity that, that we all have to have every day. You know mm -hmm. it Im impacts each and every one of us daily, whether we realize it or not. You know because all of us eat. Actually, your foods get cold out there as we speak, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody <laughs> produced that food, right? That's right. Yeah. Now I know uh, in June it's Dairy Month, right? Mm -hmm. June is Dairy Month. We've done segments with lots of various dairy farms around the area, and you do dairy yourself. It's right. That's a very time consuming labor intensive it is particular entity isn't it it is yeah and of course you know i'm blessed with some good help there at home to help take care of the the dairy and then of course we have family as well that work on the farm too and of course i'm still actively involved as well so you know i still get my boots in the mud daily now on the other side what would each of you say is the highlight for you of farming what do you enjoy most or get most out of your experience farming why do you still do it? Larry's a senior uh, senior uh, uh, delegate here, so we'll we'll defer you can the start. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, you gotta love it. Mm -hmm. It'd be the worst thing you could do. But it's really a lot of enjoyment to to put out the crops, watch them grow, and harvest them. And you know, you get a lot of satisfaction out of that. And I milked for 35 years, and uh, that's a seven-day. Mm -hmm. 
24 hours a day, you know, that you have to be with it and, and you got to love it or again, you, yeah. it'd be hard to do, but, uh, but enjoying watching the crops grow and, and, uh, you know, be, of course, we, everything's in the good Lord's hands as far as taking and making them grow. And that's, it's a gamble we all go to every year, but, uh, we enjoy it. Enjoy it. Larry. Well, I enjoy uh, working with my cattle, watching them, taking care of them, making sure that nothing's sick. I check on them every day. And Joe Paul and, and Larry said dairy is every day, but if you take care of your uh, beef cattle, it's an everyday job checking on them. And, uh, you know, well, I've always mentioned uh, and to be in the farm and now, this younger generation, it just costs so much for them to get set up, mm -hmm. and the return that we're getting on it is not that much, which everything is looking better in the last three or four years, and it's the way I look at it, that a few more younger people might be able to get into it. Do you see that it being an issue is that younger people, there are other ways for them to make money that are less labor intensive, or why, why do you see that younger people aren't as... Or is it just the expense of getting started in it? Well, that's a lot of it. It's just you know such a tremendous investment. Unless you have an opportunity through a family operation to you know to get involved <coughs> in it, it's, it's really tough just to go out there and start cold turkey from you know scratch to, to build a farming operation. But you know it's it's always been done and it's still being done and it's still possible. But you you know you just got to love the the job. You got to love the occupation. You got to just feel good about getting up every morning, uh, you know, going out in the fresh air and the sunshine, and uh, and know that you're producing a good wholesome product for. For the community, you know, and the food and fiber is, you know, something that everybody has to have, and it makes you feel good to know that you're part of producing that, and and you know, you just have to feel good about, uh, you know, that kind of work. You know, I just I love what I do, and and I don't have a watch and don't need one actually. I just go out and work when the sun comes up and quit when it goes down, and hope everything works out in between time. But it's a labor of love, and it's you know, it's kind of an addiction actually. Either get, you either have it or you don't. Basically, if you don't want a farm, there's no way you can be a successful farmer. But if, you, if that's what you really want to do, you'll figure out a way to make it work, even today. Now, for all three of you, was farming in your background with your fathers and ancestors doing yeah. farming? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something you grew up yeah. knowing to do? I basically was. My, my dad had a small farm, a little 20-acre farm. He was a mechanic, and but uh, I just always enjoyed being outside and being my own mm -hmm. boss, I guess you could say, and <clears throat> taking a chance. So doing the American dream, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, you know it's uh, you know you have to be disciplined to farm because you know you got a set amount of income and when you first get in you know you got to reinvest if you make profits you have to reinvest it in your operation to you know to gain some equity you know it just, don't just happen and of course in in the process of of, uh, of acquiring equity you know you're giving up some other things that in life that you'd like to have maybe you see other folks doing you sacrifice those to invest in your farm. To, to build your farm as a business, and it is a business, you know, it is a way of life, but it's also a business, and you have to treat it that way if you're going to be successful.